This video was made after I made changes to my printer, so I don't have before and after images. Some images will show parts after the completed modification. It probably goes without saying, before taking your printer apart, print all the parts for making the modification. Sometimes, in the excitement, we forget important things like this. Not so important if you have another printer. The STL files for the motor mount and additional parts are available on Thingiverse at the locations available in the description for this video. You will need an extension cable for extending the stepper motor from the existing cable. I got a set from Amazon, and a link is included in the video description. If you add the cable support mount for using a Bowden tube to support the cables, you will need an M3 by 20 mm screw to fasten it to the mounted motor. When you have all the parts printed, you can disconnect the cable from the stepper motor, remove the filament and Bowden tube from the hot end, you can leave the pneumatic fitting holding the tubing in place, Remove the pressure release arm from the drive mechanism, using care not to lose the spring or other parts. Remove the screws holding the drive mechanism to the stepper motor, using care not to drop the stepper motor. Set all parts aside for later reassembly. Loosen the screws on the left end of the x-axis, which hold the stepper belt tight, so the belt has some slack. Remove the nuts holding the upper rollers on the x-axis traveler. Remove the rollers and spacers and set aside. Insert the spacers in the newly printed speed drive mount. The spacers should fit snugly. If the holes are too tight to press the spacers in, carefully file the holes with a round file until you can press the spacers in. Test often so you don't make the holes too large because the snug fit is what holds the new mount in place. The spacers should be pressed flush with the flat side of the new mount. A small amount of the spacer will extend from the other side and will contact the rollers, keeping them from binding on the new printed mount. Position the new mount with the spacers on the screws which hold the rollers and remount the rollers. Make sure the two on top and the one on bottom are in the grooves of the x-axis extrusion. Tighten the nuts just tight enough to be snug. The rollers should move freely. Pull the adjustment pulley so the belt is tight and tighten the screws. Verify that the x-axis traveler moves smoothly across the length of the extrusion. Loosen the print nozzle about one turn from being snug. Cut a new length of tube for the hot end. This tube must go from the nozzle up into the pneumatic connector of the drive mechanism. My length was about 55 millimeters. Insert the short tube through the pneumatic connector on the hot end until it stops at the nozzle. There should be enough tube above the pneumatic connector to go completely into the pneumatic connector on the drive mechanism when it is installed. Position the drive mechanism on the short tube and check to be sure the holes align with the motor mount holes. If the mount is too low, make a longer tube. If too high, trim the tube a little. Position the motor in the mount and screw in the lower left roundhead screw and the upper right flathead screw. Remount the pressure arm and the spring in the upper left hole. If you will use the cable support mount, use an M3 by 20 screw to mount the cable support mount to the lower right hole for the motor mount. Tighten all screws in the motor mount. Connect the extension cable to the original cable and connect to the stepper motor. 
If using the cable support mount, insert a piece of Bowden tube in the cable support mount and use a zip tie to attach the other end to the old motor mount. The tubing should be long enough to keep a curve in the tubing at the full range of the X and Y axes, approximately 55 millimeters. Use zip ties to fasten the cables to the Bowden tube support. Mount the Bowden mount at spool on the front top frame extrusion in about the center. Lift the mount and slide the press plate under the mount and use an M4 screw to press against the plate, holding the mount in place. I used a nylon screw since that is what I had after first running an M4 Allen screw through the hole to clean the printed threads. Move the spool mount from its original position to the front left vertical extrusion such that the long arm of the mount is parallel to the front of the printer. You will use the alternative holes in the mount for this. Cut a Bowden tube for the filament feed. The tube must be long enough to allow free travel of the X and Y axes, approximately 55 to 60 millimeters. Insert the Bowden tube down through the mount so it extends 5 to 10 millimeters past the bottom. Add zip ties to the Bowden tube above and below the mount. The ties need to be snug to prevent sliding, but don't crimp the tubing. This keeps the Bowden tube from creeping through the mount during filament, feeding, and retraction. The holes at both ends of the Bowden tube are loose enough to allow rotation as the X, Y axes move. Place a spool of filament on the spool holder and run the filament through the Bowden tube. Position the Bowden mount at drive on the new motor mount. Use the filament and the Bowden tube to align the mount with the feed mechanism. Fasten the mount with an M4 screw. Reinstall the print nozzle and tighten. Set the heat for the print head and let it come to set temperature. The nozzle is now hot, so without touching the nozzle with your fingers, use your wrench to check the print nozzle to make sure it is still tight since it may loosen the first time it is heated. Push about a hundred millimeters of filament through the Bowden tube, allowing the tube to be pushed away from the drive mechanism. This will let you feed filament more easily through the hot end. Release the pressure on the filament and push filament through the drive mechanism until it comes out the print nozzle. Then rewind the extra filament on the spool until the Bowden tube returns to its working position. Level the bed and test the printing capability of the new configuration. I hope you found this video interesting and helpful for modifying your printer. Thank you for viewing.